everyone. So I guess everyone is still regenerating from last night's party. Uh, but I welcome everyone who's present currently. Uh, let's see if I can switch the slides. I am Gabor. I'm a front-end developer at Pronovix. You may have heard a presentation from Kitty and Arpi, who are my colleagues, uh, yesterday. They are also front-end developers. And first things first, I would like to say thanks to the people who inspired me to begin my journey with Layout Builder, and one of them is Ted Bowman. I had the chance to attend DrupalCon Seattle uh, this year, and uh, he had a presentation about Layout Builder there, and he also has a lot of other material on the subject available on the World Wide Web, and he's a great guy. And also to all the contributors of the modules I used for this presentation and those who contributed to Layout Builder. So why would anyone choose Layout Builder as their uh, page management or, or layout creation tool? Uh, I think when you don't have to ask developers to create new templates for you, that's a huge uh, budget saving strategy. So when you can create templates from the UI, it's on one hand cost friendly, on the other hand, it's, much, it's a much more advanced way of site building. You can create fancy landing pages. You would accept, expect that from a, a tool that is about layout creation and layout building. <coughs> it has a lot of uh, comfort features that uh, you can use drag and drop to rearrange uh, the elements you put on the layout. Uh, you can also create the layouts, then rearrange the stuff you put there. And uh, yeah, it's going to come later. You can place any Drupal block. Let's say you have a page where you want to put a form as a block somewhere. You can just uh, use any uh, block available in Drupal to put it anywhere in Layout Builder. You can also restrict these blocks that you want to place. You will see later how this works. Uh, because maybe it's an overkill for people. Uh, there's a live preview, which is, I think, one of the most sought after um, features when you're creating pages. You have the quick edit in Drupal core, but I wouldn't call that live preview. You have the preview page on uh, node edit forms, but still you don't feel like you will see the final uh, product that you create. And uh, layouts can be defined on the entity type level. So you can create default layouts for the different entity types, like users, nodes, taxonomies. And it is in core. I think that's a very, uh, very huge benefit. So what are we going to talk about today? We have three topics. I'm going to do a small recap on the technologies that we have had so far that are related to layout building, landing page building, and uh, managing um, pages. Uh, I'm going to show you a, an overview on uh, what can Layout Builder do, then we will delve deep into the features of Layout Builder. So what about the other uh, useful tools that we have? We have panels. Uh, I haven't really used panels in Drupal 8. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not really developing D7 anymore, only when uh, it is absolutely necessary. But I loved panels in D7. It gave you a lot of freedom to uh, create a lot of really, really fancy, really useful things from the UI. You didn't really have to write too much code. And it gave you so much freedom that you have to restrict it if you were to ship this to customers, because it's so overwhelming. You can do so much with panels that uh, even, I think, even like experienced developers or site builders get confused on what they can do with panels. A uh, really great benefit with panels was that it was shipped with the in-place editor, which gave you the option to have a live preview because you, just you were just editing uh, panels uh, on the fly. We had paragraphs. We still have paragraphs on D8. It's a very popular module. If you filled out one of the quizzes, that we had at the Pronovix booth, uh, and you have seen the answers, then you could see that Paragraphs is actually one of the most popular modules in Drupal. 
uh, it is like the stable field collections module. You can have revisionable, fieldable entities. You can nest paragraphs into paragraphs. You could create really complex uh, data structures with paragraphs, and that gave a lot of options to uh, front-enders and uh, themers on how, what to do with these data structures. And if you go really crazy, you can uh, nest paragraphs into paragraphs. You can create paragraph types like grid that are only for structuring other paragraphs. And inside the grid, you can have different kinds of uh, elements. What is good with this is that it, it gives a lot of flexibility to create content, but you were completely missing the uh, live pre preview thing. Even with quick edit, if you are quick editing paragraphs, it wasn't really this really good user experience that you would have on the editorial side. You also have display suite. It's, uh, uh, I, again, I don't know what's the state of that in Drupal 8. I think this is being uh, substituted with the field layouts module that's also in core. You could uh, predefine layouts, then use those layouts on uh, form, form edit and uh, the display pages of entities. It was much more static than uh, what Layout Builder or, or other more flexible layout creating solutions could offer you. And well, context is not <laughs> a page building tool, but some people do use it for that because it alleviated the issue with the block layout, that if you wanted to have a block just for a single URL or single context, you didn't want to have this huge list of blocks in the block layout. You could just create a context where you can put together the blocks that you need for that uh, context. OK, so that's all for the recap. Let's check what Layout Builder knows and does. It's a little bit like panels. You have the live preview, like with the in-place editor. Uh, you can create layouts, who would have thought, because the name is Layout Builder. Uh, with panels, you also had this flexible layout thing. I don't remember the name. You had this slider where you could adjust the percentages, like you have a two-column thing. You could adjust the slider, and you have 30% width column on the left side. 70% on the right side. It wasn't bad, but it didn't really, I think most of the front-enders weren't really satisfied how uh, this was handled because it wasn't really customizable. It's a little bit like paragraphs. You have fieldable entities, the custom block types that you can put on the layouts. And uh, you can create entities instantly, just like you would have a paragraphs form and it's a little bit like display suite, but that's the field layout module and it's still experimental. So what can it do? Uh, the most basic functionality is that you can define layout defaults on the entity type level. Uh, like you have an article node type, you, you start using the layout builder for this entity type, the article entity type, and uh, then as you would expect, all the existing article contents that you have on the site updates with this layout that you have not just defined. Uh, you can also have a different layout per view mode. So if you have a teaser view mode, uh, you can have a completely different layout for that instance. You can export this to config con in contrast to the overrides, because overrides happen on the entity or the content level. You can have, a, like, if you have a landing page, I added this because it's sort of like creating landing pages. You have a landing page content type, and you don't want to have a default layout for that uh, entity type. Then you can just go to the content and override the default layouts, and you will have a different layout for each content. As you would expect, just like with other content, you can't export this uh, anyhow. It happens on the entity level, and it's stored there this information. You can create layout templates, and these templates are what can be used when you are creating the layout. So basically, layouts are, you create a layout which becomes a template, and you can use the layout section templates to put together a bigger <laughs> set of templates. Uh, these can be registered in themes and modules, and the most juicy thing in this 
case, I think, is when you go to the uh, when you create a custom PHP class for the layout that you want to uh, provide to your content editor, site builders, because you can also create settings forms. And then when you have a settings form on the layout, then it will give you a lot of uh, very dynamic options on how to handle these. So we're going to talk about the features. There's a couple of items here. Uh, the first two is something I mentioned, and then we will delve into other topics as well, like permissions, restrictions. I'm not going to read it. OK, first item, the layout defaults. This is the most basic functionality. Uh, when you enable the layout builder module, you will get a checkbox when you're on the Manage Display page, and you can just opt in this checkbox and start rampaging with the layouts. So let's say I have a very simple article. Uh, it is, yeah, the theme, as, the theme is a custom theme that we use. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit the display, the managed display form of this uh, entity type. I'm going to opt, opt in this uh, use layout builder option, and then we can start managing the layout. When I get to this form, I'm going to see the fields as uh, just as labels, but you can always opt in the show content preview option so you have a better, better uh, feeling of how this looks like. There are, we have the uh, options for the sections where, that we can put. And in this case, actually, the, the sections that you saw there are the default that comes with Layout Builder. And uh, uh, I could choose what percentages uh, I want to have for this these two-column section. Uh, that is something that later we'll talk about how adjustable this is. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to just adjust this article a little bit so it looks somewhat better on this page. I'm adding a couple of blocks that comes with the node, but I think you can guess what these fields are because the label is quite descriptive. I'm going to move the image field to a new uh, section. As you see, this drag and drop feature works quite well. You can move blocks between sections. I've changed the image style of this, uh, the, the style, the image formatter of this image field. And uh, it was actually 1,200 times 400. So now it has this more banner or header image-like look. So this is the most basic thing. I updated the, the entity type. I updated the uh, layout on the entity type level. So this changes for all the article entities. What about the overrides? Uh, there's another option, which is not mandatory. When you enable Layout Builder, if you want to have uh, content-specific overrides. So I have a basic page, which is the home page, and we have an Our Team page. And uh, I want to have different um, different versions of these basic pages. So not only I'm going to enable the Use Layout Builder option, but I also want to have each of these contents to have their own layouts defined. And when we go back and start editing the layout, uh, I'm going to add uh, a latest articles block for the home page. this scenario and uh, you can actually see that there's a sheer amount of blocks it's not something that you necessarily want to provide to your content editors and we'll get back to that in a later item the layout builder restrictions now I have this block on the home page and uh, I don't have this block on my our teams page uh, which means that I added that I just overrided the default layout OK, I'm not going to go deep into the layout builder permissions part. Uh, what might be interesting is like the, the second line, the, this one, because it means that if you, like for some roles, you want to, want to be able to uh, 
define the layout defaults, but if you just want to have users who create landing pages or just certain content types, you can just opt in that if they have, if, if they have the permission to edit this particular entity type or this particular yeah, entity type, uh, then they won't be able to edit anything else. So it's, uh, I guess the granularity can be improved, but it has already some really good uh, features, options. So here's some, I think, mandatory thing. The Layout Builder Restrictions Contrib module, which, as the name suggests, you have layouts, you have blocks. You don't necessarily want to show, you don't necessarily want to give all the options you can see there's, there's a lot of blocks, like maybe the revision ID and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like time zone, user ID, kind of blocks that are, uh, do exist in Drupal and you can use, but you don't want users to add this to the page that you are defining. So we have the layout builder restrictions enabled and we get this new, two new drop downs on the manage display page. One is for the blocks, another one is for the layouts. I think I'm going to speed this up a little because I'm just gonna opt, I'm just gonna choose a different, uh, the other radio button, which is by default, everything is allowed. If you just change this to the specific blocks, then everything is opted out by default and only the box that you opt in will be available. The same goes for the layouts. You can just select a couple, and then when you get to the layout editing page, then you will no longer see the box, only the single one that I selected, and the same goes for the sections. Okay. What about the templates? This is something I'm also not going to delve deep into. Everything is very well documented on Drupal.org. Uh, even this screenshot is from Drupal.org. If you want to de define your own layouts, you can do this in themes and modules. Themes are for more simpler use cases. With modules, you can create custom PHP classes for layouts, and you can provide settings forms, and I think the rest is up to your imagination. There are a couple of mandatory, uh, uh, mandatory keys that you have to define in your YAML file, and some optional th stuff. Uh, but you can read about this. Okay, so let's check a simpler use case. We have a very popular framework, Bootstrap. It has a grid system. So I'm going to use, uh, I created this custom module for this uh, demonstration. And I have pulled in the, the whole Bootstrap framework. Uh, and I'm going to use these one, two, three, four columns uh, templates for editing my layouts. Uh, this is how you define the, the layouts in your layouts.yaml file. Some of these are mandatory. The library field is optional. I wanted to pull in an external library because I'm using the Bootstrap framework. So I've enabled the Bootstrap layouts module for this occasion. <coughs> And when we start editing the layout, then some new sections will appear besides the defaults that are provided by Layout Builder. So let's add the three-column layout with the Bootstrap framework. If, you are, uh, if you have a good eye, you can already see that there's some this small spacing uh, at the edges of the blocks that you don't have at the other places. It's because Bootstrap has these gutters between the columns and it's already an indicator that something is different here. So let's save the form. I added just three very simple blocks that have a title and some description. And if we check how the layouts are built up, then you can see that there's the classic container row and column structure for Bootstrap. So you can imagine that if you have a different preferred framework, then uh, you can use that, that. Okay, so the juiciest part for this demonstration. When you define a completely custom 
uh, layout class. Uh, this is also very well documented on Drupal.org, and the Layout Builder module itself uh, has some really good examples how the default layouts were defined, which you can reuse on your own, uh, in your own solutions. So feel free to check this documentation out. Now I have a, a blank, different kind of content type. I named this advanced page, but it's like a landing page. And now when I'm ending the sections, I have my own custom defined uh, sections, section templates, and ooh, there's a way more advanced settings form than just selecting the, the ratios of the columns. I can upload the background image, I can define background color, opacity, spacing, and then we have a background image for this section. Uh, but we actually want this to be fu full width, so it, uh, it goes to the edges of the page. And then I'm going to add the custom block with some text and some CTA buttons. I'm also going to speed this up a little. Okay, we have buttons. I'm going to add some styles so it looks better. Uh, it's not the best user experience right now, but the end result looks quite good. So I only see the label, but you can always, and at any time you can opt in the content preview so you have a very good uh, impression of how the end result will look like. And when I save this form, I have a huge hero image, some call to actions, and it was like a matter of seconds that I can create it. I, I could create this. Okay, some extra information. This is not entirely related to Layout Builder, but it's a very part of it. The block types come with the core block point. You are not with Layout Builder, uh, but defining block types will allow you to create fancy landing pages because it's the, the blocks you create based on the block types that will define how this landing page look, will look like. Even the text block I added uh, is, was one of these block types. So let's, uh, the block types are, are just the same fieldable entity types that you have uh, with nodes and uh, users and contact forms and taxonomies. Uh, you can also have, uh, you can also use Layout Builder to, to define the layout of a block itself. So I'm going to add some text. And yeah, I'm just showing that, as you can see, uh, the same blocks appear as you have the block types defined. I'm calling the power of Florem Ipsum to have some example text. We have a body block. And let's also add uh, another section to the bottom, which won't have any kind of section spacing, but I want to have a background color for this, and let's just make it half opacity because I want this to uh, want this section to appear right next to the footer block or the footer region of this page. Some example text. I'm filling out the fields of this custom block type, this call to action block type. And once everything is finished, I can again check how, it will, how the end result will look like. I have a CTA section at the bottom. And as you would expect, this appears at the bottom of the page without any kind of section spacing, because this is how I edited the settings form and creating the section. OK. And now. Let's just, I'm not going to speak. I have prepared some, like a small movie for this occasion, and I hope you will enjoy it. You can create, well, OK, it's not the most beautiful thing I created, but I hope you get the idea what you can do with this.
So, uh, and thanks. And thanks to Luke Kittis Corgi, who is our best friend in the office. Okay, some ad uh, additional information. Just want to show that you can do a lot with very little. These are the contrib and custom modules and custom themes I've used for this demonstration. And uh, there are some useful links available. This presentation will be shared, so you can access it uh, if you have internet connection. And I'd like to highlight that we are still recruiting. We have open positions for backend, senior frontend, and UX designer positions. And if you're interested in joining us as a, an intern or an I trainee, as we call them, then you can apply on our site. Any questions? There's a lot of questions. There's just four questions. It's not a lot. Is there a way to use Layout Builder for the whole page, not just the content portion? Unfortunately, not. So the Layout Builder is, uh, I hope I can show it to you. So it becomes more clear. Just a moment. So actually, when you, when you enable this use layout builder, uh, I have to, OK, here it is. So when you enable uh, on the manage display uh, form to enable layout builder, then you will get uh, a locked field on the manage field, which is this uh, layout builder layout field, which basically means that you are adding information to this field, which means that you can't edit the whole the regions on a page and the theme, just the content region. But if you are if you are like your theme is well structured, then maybe it's not an issue to uh, use Layout Builder for everything. Is there a migration path from Panorizer to Layout Builder? I don't know, so it's up to research. Sorry for not providing a useful answer. Are you actively using and promoting the use of Builder for your projects? What size of project it is a good fit? Does it scale well? We are in, in a transition period. Uh, we are currently using paragraphs, and we would like to uh, have an upgrade path from paragraphs to layout builder, because well, hopefully with the paragraph types and block types comparison, we can do this uh, with less pain than you would expect. Uh, so we are not currently using, but we intend to use it. We have enterprise level customers, uh, but I'm not sure to what extent I can <laughs> tell you about this. Uh, but I think we have a site with, Peter, can you help me? With ABN we have, I don't know, like a lot of, like, I don't know how many active users. Okay, doesn't matter. Another question, is there a great benefit for the site owner when we use Layout Builder? Does it help them manage layout on their own? Do they find it easy to learn? I'm not sure if they find it easy to learn. Uh, to the people I showed so far, they had this really good impression. They were using paragraphs before for content editing and creating uh, flexible layouts and flexible pages and they found the demonstration of how Layout Builder works a lot better. But since we, don't, we haven't finished adapting to this or transitioning to this, I don't have like, clear answers on how actually good this is going to be. There is migration bot from panel since yesterday. Okay, I guess this is an information for the previous question, which was, is there a migration path from Panelizer? And there is a migration path from panels since yesterday. Check. Uh, at, okay, should I write it down? <laughs> I don't know who answered it. Maybe you can discuss it between yourselves. Uh, or do you want to know it now? Who has the question if I don't, if, if it doesn't have any GDPR issues? Okay, they don't want to answer, no problem. Okay, I think that's all then.
thank you very much for the attention. And uh, one slight information, those of you who have filled out the quiz and scored at least, how many points? Five points, you are eligible for the raffle, so you have the chance to win the mouse, and this is going to happen right now. Thanks. <laughs>